Hi loves! Welcome to Humanitarian Chronicles where I highlight extraordinary people doing extraordinary things. Today we are here with an absolutely awesome angel on earth, Royce Morales, one of my real life heroes. Royce has been helping people, myself included, overcome emotional blocks and pain in their lives and transform into the people they were born to be, the best selves they were born to be, through a profound life transforming program of her own insight and creation called Perfect Life Awakening. She is a deeply intuitive teacher and coach, is a celebrated author of four books, not to mention a creative writer on so many other fronts. Royce's teachings have been going on since 1977, and thank goddess they have, because they have helped myself and thousands of others become much more in touch with who we are, and it is truly why I'm living an amazing life today. I have Royce to thank for my amazing life and the way I feel about my life. So, Royce, I am so grateful for you. Thank you so much for being on the show. I cannot wait to introduce you to the world. Welcome. Oh, you're so great, Abby. You're so great. <laughs> See, that's why I love her. She's a cheerleader. She's a hero. You're so amazing. Well, I know I just mentioned PLA, Perfect Life Awakening. What exactly is PLA? Could you please tell our viewers? Oh, wow. Well, that's always the toughest question. Um, what perfect is it? Life Awakening. Pardon? Right. Okay. What is it? It's, it's oh, what subjective. It? It's subjective. That's why. It Yes, very subjective, and it means something different to everyone that does the course. Um, hmm, it's a course that allows you to delve deeply into yourself, into your soul, into your emotions, into your fears, into anything that's blocking you in life. Um, it's, oh God, it's always so hard to explain. I wish I could get it down to 25 words for you. Oh, um, well, it's very, yeah. It's very experiential. It's not just information. Maybe a better way to explain it is to tell you kind of how I got into it yes. or, you know, what inspired it. Um, I mm. was born with one of these crazy minds that was always asking questions. My poor mother, she would be like, you know, come on, Royce. I don't know the meaning of life. You know, I don't know about where God lives. I don't know these answers. And I just mm. used to drive her crazy. And at a very young age, I started looking for my own answers, and in the process of doing that, I read a lot of books, and I asked a lot of, you know, questions everywhere. I did a lot of religion hopping, a lot of discipline hopping, and I found that everything kind of worked a little bit for a little while. You know, I would go to a weekend seminar, and I'd come home, and I'd be all high and excited, and I'd walk in, and my son would do something, and I'd, I'd be yelling at him. I'd be like, what? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute. I just spent two days, you know, learning how to be loving and learning how to, you know, heal the world. And here yeah. I am screaming at my two year old, you know. Oh. And so out of that, I started, I got involved in an organization and um, it, it was called the Spiritualist Society. And they actually taught us how to channel and how to be intuitive and how to, you know, be a medium, so to speak. And I was there for about three years, and within a few months, I became like their star channeler and whatever, and I, um, toward the end of my stay there, I started to question a lot of the stuff that they were saying, because again, it was kind of like, wow, this is interesting, it's nice, but, you know, so what? My, my Uncle Henry came in to tell me to put air in my tires, you know? It's like, I need something deeper. I need something with substance. Wow. My teacher called me one night, and she couldn't make it to class, and she asked if I would take the class, and I said, oh, sure, whatever. So I teach the class that night, and I didn't really do anything. I just kind of sat there with these people that I'd known for three years and didn't really know any of them, really. Um, and I just kind of allowed them to talk and share and bond. And at the end of the, the evening, one of them came up to me and said, oh, my God, that was the most incredible experience I've ever had. You know, would you consider teaching me? And I looked at her. I really and truly thought she was nuts. And I said, <laughs> you know, in my head, I'm going, what? I can't teach. What? Are you crazy? What? And out of my mouth said, sure, I'd love to. Bring your friends. <laughs> and, so, I know. and so she arrived with about eight or nine friends in my living room and I sat there and I had no idea what I was going to say and words just kind of 
started, you know, and people would ask me questions and I had no idea what the answers were, but I would kind of trust that little intuitive sense that, oh, you need to say this to them. And so it just kind of started from there. And I was teaching in my living room for quite a few years. And then one day um, I realized that all of my students were from the South Bay. And I said, well, why am I having them come all the way to West Hollywood, which is where I lived? Why don't I open a center in the South Bay? And again, it was just this little germinating thought. And I said, okay, fine. Um, The next day I was meditating and I, I literally saw a vision of this place, this office, and this vision told me where it was and how to get there and you need to go and you need to rent this place. And I thought, okay, sure. And I would, I, I have to say, yes, I was a seeker, but I had this equally strong part of me that was a skeptic. Mm-hmm. So everything that I learned, everything that I taught had to go through my filters and my litmus test to see if it really worked. So I get this vision, I get in my car in the morning and I, I take my husband with me and I'm like, yeah, I had this vision. Okay. It told me I needed to rent this place. It said, go down PCH and turn right here and look up and I'm driving and I turn the car and I look up and there's a for rent sign in the office. Awesome. <laughs> and I, went, oh. <laughs> I love so that. I, I know. So I get out of my car. I go upstairs. I find the landlord. I said, hi, I'd like to rent the office. He says, don't you want to see it? I said, oh, yeah, yeah, I guess so. But, yeah, I really want to rent this office. Awesome. (laughs) He said, okay, kind of looked at me like I was crazy. And he said, what do you do? And I said, oh, I teach meditation. He says, oh, that's really cool. He was like an old hippie. Nice. Within minutes, I rent the place. And from then on, I've, you know, been in the South Bay until recently when I I closed my office and I moved here. I live in the mountains now. Amazing. um, Yeah, it it was pretty amazing. But it just... Students would arrive, it would always be word of mouth, it would be a small group, and they would just always, I, would, I always have to say, I, lo- I learned more from my students than from what I was teaching, because everybody brought something important, everybody brought a piece of me to learn about by showing me something, or by asking me a question that I didn't know the answer for, and it would just kind of come out of my mouth, and I'd write it down after they left, it's like, oh, that, that was a good answer. <laughs> Oh my gosh, Royce. Well, honey, from taking classes with you for 10 plus years, I think, for so many, well, I think I was with you in those classes for, I I wish I could be there now. We don't live in the same state, but cyber classes are coming, everybody. But no, having, having studied and learned with you and meditated with you and progressed in my life with you, I can vouch for everything. I mean, Royce is truly the most intuitive person she listens to that little voice inside of her. Sometimes it's a loud, big voice, but she listens to it. Yes, despite. Yes, tell Abby this. Yeah, exactly. Oh my gosh. And it is just so profound. And, you know, it's funny. I was, I am a seeker just like you, and I am a skeptic just like you, as you well know. Oh God, did I give you hell in those glasses? I'm so sorry. My lower self was kicking. What? I've had worse. <laughs> oh, thank God. I thought I was for sure the worst. A kicking and screaming. All right, well, I forgive myself. I let go. I'm in Al Anon. I, I do PLA. Forgive, forgive. But yeah, no, being a skeptic myself and having gone, and a seeker, having gone to all of those weekend workshops, um, I mean, all of them, I won't even name them because they're not worth naming. Your work and your teachings are so profound and they are so profoundly different than any other self-help self-enhancement seminar workshop book I've ever read ever even the pamphlets that you hand out the beautiful colorful creative magically written because you are a creative writer dittos that you hand out every class are blow me out of the water more than any other book I've read so I honestly you are the real deal you are amazing and that that story of how you came to your realizations is totally awesome because that's how I found you so like attracts like. I found Royce in the midst of a very deep, dark place in my life. I think I had just finished grad school to be a weather girl. I realized I did not want to be a weather girl. Um, like I met Yvonne at the market while I was like eating frozen cherries back when I ate fruit. And I was like just in the most lost place of my life. And she was so happy and glowing and like so centered in herself and she just started talking to me and I was like 
I want what you have. You are so happy <laughs> and grounded and you have a light about you. I, I literally said that. And she's like, well, actually, I came to this light through this amazing teacher, Royce. You know, everyone talks about it. Everyone's had a guru or a teacher to get to their light. And I don't want to put that pressure on you, honey, but you truly, you are, you are such a modern day guru, a chill, hip, cool grandma guru. She's a grandma. Can you believe this woman is a grandmother? You're, you're so amazing. Uh, yeah. I'm so glad you told that story. I wanted to know how you, how you got to those realizations, but it's the answer yeah. that, that I like to hear, which is intuition, listening to that voice that's bigger than our ego and all that. So what, what I learned from PLA, Perfect Life Awakening, is that when there are buttons that put, when someone pushes our buttons or when there is something outside of us that we see like a quality in somebody or a, hap a happenstance that we judge as bad, wrong, ugly, disgusting, okay, heinous, or even great, it's a reflection of us. So yeah. life is a mirror and when our buttons are pushed, that's something for us to look at. So yes. your teachings, I mean, that's kind of a really big part of it. Your cool. teachings yeah. taught me how to take responsibility for my life. Instead of blaming my parents, blaming society, blaming the billboards, blaming my horrible public school education, whatever. Instead of blaming everybody else for my life, I started looking at myself. Wow, that triggers me. What's that about? And yeah, going yeah. within and seeing when I made that decision and healing it. And yes. I mean that I would love yeah. to talk a little bit about that, especially yeah. due to the state of affairs in the world today and, and yes. specifically in America. I would love to talk about that, how everything is a yes. mirror. And if they push our buttons, it's, it's something for us to look yeah. at. Yeah. And I, I have to say, I mean, you're jumping in pretty deep to where the my teachings go but and it it takes several weeks to get to that point where people are, are even willing to address that because right. it's really the hardest part of what I teach right. but you know I have yet to see it not be the truth Amen, <laughs> you know sister. if there's something that that bugs me or if I'm judging somebody or if I just want to you know go have a re-election, shall we say. <laughs> <laughs> no names mentioned. Well, it's, it's happening, but it's happening supposedly to get him more votes. So, Right, yeah, I know. But it, it's all about not only looking to see what's being reflected about yourself, because that that's part of the battle. That's part of what happens when you're looking at those things that bug you. But what I think makes my classes different is that we then take that and find out where that came from. So if I'm sitting here judging you and saying, oh my God, I can't stand her curly hair, you know, it's really because I can't stand my curly hair. Well, why? You know, I, because I'm that person that says why all the time. I had to find out why. It wasn't enough to just say, yep, she's a mirror. Okay, great. I had to see, well, well, where did I decide that I don't like my hair? Or where did I have that notion that curly hair is, is ugly. So I, I take people back to those subconscious levels where they made some really deep, really core decisions about themselves so they can heal that. And then, you know, when I'm around you with your curly hair, I can look at it and go, oh, wow, that's really beautiful curly hair, you know? Oh, and I've got some too. So things shift by, by discovering those sources. And that's really what makes PLA different. It's not just the superficial. It's not just, oh, la, 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 life is good, you know, be happy, don't worry, whatever those cliches are that we're, we're told, those spiritual cliches, they're great, they're wonderful, and they're true, but they don't stick until you do the inner work. That's you right. know, that's really the difference. Real yeah. world action, and that is what you espouse, yeah. and you live, and uh -huh. you teach, and that is why it... That is why a weekend seminar, even though you do lead weekend retreats, which are absolutely life transforming and mind blowing, everyone should go on one. I've gone on many. Um, it's it's really the continual work, the continual yeah. effort, the continual, you know, reflection and yeah. diving yeah. deep into ourselves. Well, that's that's. I wish that all of the kids that I grew up with and went to preschool and elementary school with would do PLA because. Well, I wish we could rewind the clock because then they wouldn't have called my hair pubes my whole life growing up, and I could have had an easier time on the monkey bars without kids <laughs> making fun of my fro and throwing maxi pads at, at it to stick because it was Velcro. 
Well, of course it's going to stick. It's a maxi pad. It's not my hair that's the Velcro. It's the maxi pad. But anyway, I digress. I need to process that. Yeah, I obviously, think so. <laughs> obviously, that curly hair topic is still a trigger. I've got to watch that Sesame Street video about I love my hair. That's after after we click off. I'm gonna watch still it. Still have to process it. I'm gonna send that. We'll still have to process it. Yeah. It's true. So no. yeah, like I like let's just say in light of this Donald Trump pussy grabbing uh, situation. So oh for boy, example, she's going political. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny because of you and Twelve Steps, which your program reminds me of 12 steps a lot um it's much deeper and, and it and it does ask the whys instead of the 12 steps which are you know admit you have a problem find your higher power um release detach with love all the mottos that you were talking about all the slogans none of them work unless i go to meetings none of them work unless i'm working with my sponsor and your work is so much more profound because al-anon for example which i'm in will just tell you go meditate go pray but you give us the tools how do you meditate and go within and clear those subconscious blocks? Yes, so exactly. I'll just yeah. I'll just take Donald Trump for example. So I watched that video because of all the hullabaloo I heard about it. I was like, okay, like I'm a seeker, I'm a scientist, I'm gonna research myself and I'm not just gonna listen to the gossip and see what everyone's saying. I couldn't believe that Donald Trump, even in locker room talk when he didn't know he was being recorded, would have said, Oh yeah, I just go up to women and grab their punanis. I really couldn't, I mean, whatever. I don't know who's, who am I to say if I can believe it. But I wanted to hear it myself. I heard the video and it clearly, clearly said, I'm rich and famous. Women throw themselves at me. I mean, and he was just, as an example, saying to his dude friends, you know, um, that I could just go up to them and grab their pussy and they'd be fine with it. And he was, and I was like, because of your teachings, I think in the past I would have jumped on the bad wagon and be like, that asshole, he... Blah, blah, blah. But because of what I learned through you, like looking at everything and from not an emotional place, like separate yourself from the attachment so that we can clear it, all that, just everything. Take her classes to learn. But I said, wait a second. He's actually saying something. He's actually giving me as a woman a message. Like, don't throw yourself at a man just because he's rich and famous. There are women out there who are throwing themselves at men because they're rich and famous and they're, you know letting no no one lets themselves be abused or or inappropriately touched but supposedly they're okay with just being grabbed or you know being dated or married just because you're rich and famous so like i wanted to look at that as wait a minute we women are strong powerful beings we need to take responsibility we need to stop throwing ourselves at men because they're rich and famous so i think because of your teachings and I hope we've all grown up into adulthood and started seeing life like that but I'm not going to blame Donald Trump for the misogyny that's out there and the sexism and the racism it's like wait what's my part in it you know yeah. I need to be maybe show less cleavage in my videos I need to you know I need to be more ladylike and, and own my power more so that it's not misinterpreted or whatever right. do you have a yeah. take on that or is it too well, political yeah, no, I, I totally agree. And what I'm also getting from this whole political you know, hoopla that's going on is, and I, I actually wrote a little thing about it on Facebook when the whole thing started, but I, it's basically you can't heal something unless you see it, you know? So we have this underlying racism and we have this underlying, you know, female inability to own our power and we have this terror of, strangers or whatever it is whatever it symbolizes to us and thank you donald you're bringing it all up for the world to see wow. and yes. you know hopefully heal that's oh. my hope <laughs> yes i'm with you sister all woman all men and all women i am so on board with that that's how i see it too thanks to you yeah because we're powerful and and what i love about your teaching and and again 12 steps teaches this too you teach it experientially and much deeper and better and more intimately that when when we can recognize that we play a part and we have power we are powerful to change it only when yes. we see the problem can we change it if we don't see the problem we can't change it and i right. love that about your teaching it's like only yeah. when we are aware of it can we change it only when yeah. we're aware of our attachments and our addictions and our 
you know, misinterpretations from when we were four years old and made the decision that women with curly hair are bad. Only when we're aware of that can we actually go back and change it. Right. So, yeah. And not only aware of it, but accepting of it. Right. Um, one of the things I talk about since we're talking about mirroring is I always say that we're not going to ever stop war until each of us or the vast majority of us change our internal war mentality. So if I have a three-year-old kid and he's acting up in the store and my first inclination is to slap him across the face or threaten him with slapping him across the face, that's my war mentality. That's the part of me that to solve a problem, I'm just going to slap it or kill it or hurt it. You know, And we all have those instinctual parts that do that. So until we, we accept that and face that and accept that and find out where that came from and absolutely know that we can't make choices like that anymore, you know, that's not who we are anymore, not from suppressing it, but from bringing it up and looking at it and seeing where it comes from, that's going to shift the world. You know, that's, you know, I hate to sound lofty because I don't, you know, you know me, I'm very grounded, but very. really and truly the intention behind my teachings is like a global shift in energy so that yes so that people don't think that way anymore it's like what what yeah. i'm not going to hit that kid or what i'm not going to shoot that guy because he pisses me off i'm not going to punch that guy in the face why would i do that it, it becomes like an alien behavior because it's not who we are anymore oh, I love so yeah that. that's I that's love, part of it i love that and Will Tuttle, Dr. Will Tuttle talks all about that in the World Peace Diet. It is a must-read book. But, yeah, he, he talks all about that warring mentality stemming from the hurting cultures, of which we are one of them. Stemming yeah. from, if we're able to um, artificially inseminate, a.k.a. rape a cow or a chicken for our, to breed artificially for our taste buds and feed them poison and toxins and then murder them horrifically... If we're willing to do that to animals, of course we're going to be willing to do that to more vulnerable people of our same species, uh, sure. children, women. So, yes, it starts at the end of our fork and yeah. in our own yeah. hearts, for sure. But yeah. I love that. It's so true. We've got to we change starts within. Be the change we want to see in the world. Amen. Yeah. Well, okay. And I think, yeah, go on. I think, I think there's a part of us that at a young age, looks at that kind of thing in horror. I know when my son was growing up, he was maybe three, you know, and I wasn't vegetarian in those days, and he wasn't either. And he, you know, I would be giving him a hamburger, and one day he said, Mommy, where do hamburgers come from? And I said, oh, they're, uh, they come from cows. And he said, what do you mean? And I said, well, they have to kill the cow and grind it up and turn it into a hamburger. And he looked at me and he said, I, I'm never eating one again. I love him. I and love I said, really? He said, he says, but what would I eat instead? <laughs> so he was really concerned about that too, but there's that instinctual part of us that goes, yuck. That's you know, right. until of course society says, oh, this is what people eat and it's no big deal. And so what if they torture them and, you know, all that stuff that you would see on the, the PETA uh, yeah. newsletters and whatever. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what a we become immune to it. Uh, for sure. We totally check out. I, I, I love being aware. It's painful. It's painful to accept responsibility for my own judgments and my own, you know, misinformation and my own, um, you know, but honestly, I have so much more power. I feel so much more grounded. And you know what else about all that is I'm able to apologize quicker. Like the other day I said something that my friend found offensive. And in the past before PLA and before you taught me all these things about life, I would have defended myself till the nth degree because that's what I learned to do in my house and my culture. You know, I'm not wrong. I'm right. And this is why. And you're wrong. And, you know, she was just telling me that she's like in love with a guy from another country that she's never met and they're engaged. Okay. And I'm like, well, if you haven't met in person, you don't know if you're pheromonally attracted. Why? I, why am I like spoiling her, raining on her parade? She's so happy. There's so much darkness in the world. Like, and this is something that's making her happy. Who cares if he's halfway across the world? Who cares when they meet and, and if and when, if they don't have chemistry, sh I'll be there for her to help her through her sadness. But I don't need to rain on her parade. And I was, I was able to see it. I was able to say, you know what? I totally judged you. 
that's what's happened to me in my dating life. I'm so sorry. I really yeah. apologize. And it happened fast. And she was like, that's okay. Like, I'm just so excited about this. And I wanted your support and love. And, and you judged me and told me something bad could happen. And it's like, you know, that's for God to decide. Like, um, that's the other thing about your work is you teach people, let God be God. You do what you can do to the best of your ability. You're not responsible for anybody else's food choices, life choices. You know, you pray for them. Let them hopefully come to the awareness on their own. But you take care of you, do your own processing, and then that action of theirs won't even trigger you after a while when you've cleared those blockages. You know? Yeah, you see what they're mirroring. Right, right. <laughs> When you see what they're yes. mirroring. Right. What was she mirroring? Exactly. I need to process that. But I was able to apologize quickly. And yes, I mean, she was mirroring my own, my own, I guess, fear about the world and like the unknown and like, well, what if, what if this client and I don't click or what if there isn't chemistry when I meet that new family, you know, that I'm going to work with health coaching. So yeah, she's mirroring my own fear. Like, yes, we've never met. They've only read my brochure. What if when we meet, we don't click? Okay what if then you go to get the next client but right so much is mirrored in in these moments where i think i need to play god and play therapist and tell her about the concerns no just be happy for people let them have their own experience they'll learn in their own time if they want your advice they'll ask you you know yeah. whatever yeah. yeah but and that's always that's always been one of the difficult things for me because we were probably raised by the same parents <laughs> sounds like yeah. it yeah, my mother was one of these people that was always telling people what to do. That's what she did best. And, of course, tried to run my life. And um, yeah. when I started teaching, I, I very quickly, it took me probably less than a year to realize that I don't know anything to tell these people. All I can do is present the information and they need to do whatever they need to do with it. And if they go out and never understand the concept of mirroring, and they never do the work, and they never come back to a class, that's their journey, and it's okay, you know, and because it was like, oh, they have to get it, and they have to understand it, and, you know, and I've got to tell them what to do, and I've got to fix them, and I've got to make sure that they don't do stupid things in their life, and, you know, like I said, it took about a year, and I finally said, oh, no, everybody is on their own journey, you know, yeah. I mean, I, I would, I work privately with people and I would have people come in and tell me these things and I'd be like, what? <laughs> That's crazy, you know? And I realized that to them, that was a huge issue, you know? And I couldn't judge what anybody was going through and I couldn't have any expectations on what people would get from the, from the information, right? you know? Which is why ultimately, you know, for years, people were telling me to write a book and get it out there in a written format. And I kept saying, no, 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 uh uh, nope. And finally, it just hit me one day that not only is it the time, it's the right time, but whatever people do with it is fine. You know, yes. I mean, I, there were a few things that I, I didn't say in the book because it was just too deep of a level. And I, I just didn't want to, you know, I just felt like I wanted to give people a certain amount of it. Um, but it just felt like, yeah, this is the time and whatever people get from it, they're going to get just like anybody in my, in my classroom. So well, your yeah. books are amazing. Which, which specific one of your four books are you talking about? I am talking about my most recent one called no K N O W. Yes. And the, sub, the subtitle is, um, a spiritual wake up call. <laughs> I love and it. both of those names, all of my books have one word, titles it's really interesting because they were all kind of given to me intuitively so you know that one is all about my teachings it's about um I guess almost 300 pages and it's a, a way to immerse yourself in the teachings but not be with me doing it so right. I have a lot of experiential experiential exercises and homework assignments and observation assignments and it goes very step by step very easy to follow fun to read a lot of examples um you know, I, I changed the names to protect the innocent, but I have a lot of real <laughs> student examples that you're not one of them. <laughs> <laughs> no, Maybe the innocent. I don't know. <laughs> Nobody's innocent. But no, I'm <laughs> That's cute. There was this girl with really curly hair. <laughs> <right then. laughs> that you would change the description to, she'd have straight. 
Oh my God, you're so awesome, Royce. Oh my, no, everybody, you want to be in the know, read No. It is truly yeah. amazing. It is a story. It is magically written. I can't wait to get, I mean, you know, my hands on another copy. Um, but my, actually, I wanted to talk to you about some of those examples you just mentioned. I'd love to ask you if I'm on the right track with PLA because it has been so long since I've been immersed in your wisdom in your classes. So, for example, as a metaphysical PLA life coach from taking your, um, your trainings, um, I say to people and friends and clients that I work with, so when they come to me, let's say their husband cheated on them. That's a recent case with one of my clients. And I'll say, okay, why, you know, she's willing for, to, for me to go there and ask these questions. Some people aren't sometimes, but as a coach, we can talk this way. So I'll say, well, where in your life are you cheating? And more to the point, where in your life are you cheating yourself? Because that's where people get confused with the mirror concept. They're like, well, I would never cheat on someone. I would never steal and I've been robbed. I would never, you know, grab a pussy and my pussy was grabbed. Whatever. But like, no, it's not exact. The mirror concept is not exact. It's whatever the essence is or whatever judgment you have is something you're doing to yourself. To yourself, yeah. Or you have done in the past to someone or yourself. You know, and it can be kind of slippery because it's not always exact, like you said. Right. Uh, like, for example, I had a student that was dating a guy, and he was a, a major, like, heroin addict, very, very seriously addicted to drugs. And, you know, it used to drive her crazy, and she tried to get him into Al-Anon and whatever, and, you know, and she kept trying to change him and get and fix him. And finally, when I sat down to work with her, you know, she would say to me, but I'm not, I don't use drugs. I don't do any of that stuff. So it couldn't be a mirror. But with a little bit of work, she realized that he was showing her a part of herself that was just as addictive, but doing it in a different way. You know, I, I won't disclose what the way she was doing it, but it's that type of thing. Maybe it's not to drugs, but maybe it's to chocolate chip cookies, or maybe it's to changing the world or getting rid of Donald Trump or whatever it is. But there was that addictiveness that he was mirroring to her. Absolutely. So yeah, it's very powerful. It really is. And sometimes you, you can't do it until you really delve inside and discover that deeply subconscious stuff that's really buried and bring it to light. Absolutely. So, yeah. Absolutely. It was, wow. The digging process for me was emotional, painful, yet such a release, such a freedom. Yes. Such a freedom. And that's what, and, and that's what causes things to shift. I guess that's, that would be important to say too, that it's not just about saying, oh yeah, I'm addictive. Okay, great. So do I leave him? Do I stay? What I find is that when you get in touch with what's really going on, it's like an energetic shift. It's kind of like, this might sound weird, but you know what I'm talking about. I attract people in my life because I need to get in touch with whatever it is that I need to see about myself. So I attract this guy who's addictive. I don't want to see that I'm addictive. Suddenly I see, oh yeah, I'm addictive. Energetically, I don't, I can release him or he can leave or interestingly enough, miraculously, sometimes that person can shift. So without me trying to do anything, all of a sudden, you know, I've decided to stop using heroin now, you know, so things, I, I can't even tell you how many hundreds and thousands of times doing the inner work on your end can shift the other end of the mirror. It's, it's amazing. Oh, it really is. And it, and it can happen like that. It is absolutely amazing. It has happened for me with my immediate family. It has happened for me in my relationships, in my, in my relationship with my love, my soulmate. It, it has happened. Like I that was the fantasy that I think a lot of people are under. It's like, oh, I need to, I'm not going to get married or I'm not going to settle down until I meet the perfect one that meets all my criteria. And what I learned, and of course I'm 40, so I've been, you know, I'm kind of, <laughs> but I mean, it took me a while you to find just, my soulmate. You were just a wee tot. I'm a wee tot still in my heart, so that's all that matters. But um, it took me a while to meet my soulmate in this life, you know, comparatively, but who's comparing? I'm not. But I thank God, because if I met somebody younger, it would have been a bigger train wreck than all my relationships already were. <laughs> thank you, Royce, for getting me to this garden. But, like, with him, what I realized is, A, he does have all my criteria, one of which was vegan. And the night we met, he 
ate a chicken parmesan sandwich on white bread with french fries at a bar. So, GMO, hormone antibiotic injected murdered corpse on a white flour refined processed GMO bun with deep fried canola GMO oil, probably GMO potatoes, okay? And I looked there, hor I looked at it horrified and I was like, too bad you're amazing and you meet all my other criteria from the out from the looks of it because this is never going further than this date. Why? I'm vegan. That's my lifestyle. I will never I will never be with a partner who eats that because I'm not going to be taking care of a sick man like my whole life. So anyway, the, what I realized through him, because since that night he's been vegan, he said he did it to get some, but I think he was just <laughs> more in like, hey, what I say, where, however you get there, honey, however you get there. Okay. So I'm glad that night. Wow. Yeah, that night, because it triggered something in him that was like logical and he's a brilliant man. And he's like, wait a minute. Yeah, I do need to be more aware of what I'm putting in my body that's building my my body and my cells and my heart and my soul and my consciousness. Yeah, I do. So what I realized through this beautiful man that I'm with is it's about willingness and openness. It's not about having everything on my checklist. It's about are you willing and open? And he is. And then and, and again, that I mean that example might not it's not really so PLA because it's kind of imposing my beliefs on him. <laughs> So that's not why I said that, but, but what you said is so profound because when we shift, they shift, that's not the best example of it. But when I've shifted within the course of our four year relationship, he has shifted. Like I'll just stop eating out of plastic and suddenly he'll be like, oh yeah, you know, I put it in a paper bag or a canvas bag because I'm not using plastic anymore. I don't say anything. I'm just like, yep, that was your idea, baby. Yeah. That's his idea. <laughs> I am the neck that turns the head. For sure. No, but it's true. And that's just a, a small example. But And you used to wear a shift key necklace, which I loved. Oh, you yeah. still have it. Yeah. Shift. Oh, you're so precious. shovel. Oh, you know, you're going, so back, going back to what you were saying about um, the vegan stuff, I became vegetarian, I don't know, 25, 30. I don't even know how long it's been. And my husband bless his heart, he was totally addicted to going to Taco Bell. And he would get home from work and he'd go to Taco Bell and he'd get a ground beef burrito or whatever it was he would get. And he would come home and I would start just railing on him because, you know, we're both, we're both environmentalists and we're both, you know, higher consciousness. And I can't, I mean, I just would rail on him probably for two years. Wow. You know, and all I did was make it worse. And finally, I realized, oh, my God, this is not working. I need to just trust his journey and trust his process. And if he becomes vegetarian, that's great. Because it took a while for me to become vegetarian. It wasn't an instant thing. And I just let it all go. And he ended up going out to lunch to a hamburger stand. And he called me up on his cell phone and he said, Royce, what did you do to me? And I said, what do you mean? He goes, I just went to order a hamburger, and out of my mouth came, can I have the veggie burger, please? Wow. I, wow. And from that point on, we've both been vegetarians, wow. you know, and it was like, oh, okay, good. Thank God, because <laughs> I don't really entrust my inner spiritual work with people who aren't. I mean, in all honesty, and that's a judgment, but what I've realized is the people I look up to most in the world understand cause and effect and karma and what we do to the most vulnerable we're doing to ourselves, just everything you teach, you know, like buttons, mirrors. It's like, it, yeah. So I would only entrust my deep spiritual work to somebody who didn't eat animals. So thank God I found you. It was just all fate. God knew he was, she was totally. like, Royce is here for you, honey. She's the vegetarian, uh, you know, mentor that you've been looking for. Thank God. No, that's so awesome. And I've always said you were a sorceress. So whatever. <laughs> I don't care. Again, just like you go vegan to get laid, go for it. Whatever gets you there. I don't care works. what gets people to stop eating animals, get them there. I don't care what got me to stop blaming my father and parents and society for my bad life choices. Whatever you did that got me to take responsibility for my life and get my own life on track, your sorcery worked and I'm grateful for it. <laughs> So thank I'm you. not a sorcerer. <laughs> she is. Really? She is. Yeah, she's too humble. Royce is very humble too, as you will find out. Well, how can people start working with you since you're in the mountains and not at the beach anymore? 
I'm living in the mountains, but I'm planning on conquering the technology that's going to allow people to do the classes remotely. I just started a, a kind of an advanced class for some old students, and we had a lot of technical issues, but I think they're getting resolved. Um, I trust. But, you know, that should happen soon. So if anybody's interested, um, go to my website, I guess, www. <laughs> There's so my website. Many. There's so many. Well, no, there's only one at this point, content oh. intent copy, because I'm doing a lot of freelance writing for people, so I created that website, but it also talks about PLA on the website. One of the pages all is all about PLA, and just contact me, and we, we can get something started. Awesome. Um, and my books, of course, you know, if you're interested in, in delving in a little bit, and you're not quite ready to do the in-person classes, you can read my book, which is, again, no dot dot. Um, spiritual wake up call and I also have another book called want yeah I wanted to talk dot. about that I wanted to talk yeah I want to talk about that please want. yeah that one is want um, past lives true loves and other complications which is a book that was inspired by a real experience that a spiritual teacher who shall remain nameless fictionalized teacher um, experienced understanding the true mechanism of, of soulmate love what is soulmate love really and it's a long, involved journey um, with a lot of past life references and a lot of deep inner work that went into that just to discover that, yeah, soulmates are not necessarily what you think they are. Yeah, so it's a yeah. really it's a really wonderful fiction fiction book that I highly recommend. I highly recommend. No. Yeah, because it's really the classes, too. Oh, it is. Everything you write has something profound in it. It's like Paolo Coelho... I mean, just all those writers that write beautiful fiction, there's still profound oh, yeah. psychology and philosophy inner, inner we, interwoven. And yeah. Royce's yeah. books are, are that. So, yes, no, yeah. want, and what about the children's books? Um, those are still in the process. Those are actually what started me on the journey of writing. Um, I had several students that had um, – some pretty intense experiences with their children being molested in a preschool in the South Bay. And, oh my gosh. Um, yeah, it was, it was pretty intense, and they ended up coming to me, and their children ended up coming to me. And out of that experience, I wrote a book that is really, again, my teachings, but aimed at kids, because kids get it, you know, in two seconds. Love it. Um, I had a children's class for about a year. They were six-year-olds, and I would say the same thing that would take me an hour to say to an adult, and I'd say it in one sentence, and they'd be like, okay, what's the big deal? Okay, can we go play now? So, yeah, kids just really get it. So I wrote that book as kind of a workbook for them and their parents to go through that journey of healing. Um, and then recently, I wrote a book, which, again, I, I need to finish and it talks about the birth experience but it's written from the vantage point of the egg and the sperm and talks about you know choosing our parents and choosing what our life our life is going to be and it's really cute it's really whimsical and fun yay what are so they called are you are you willing to share the titles yeah one of them is called well the the um the conception book is called Bertha is Born. Cute, cute. <laughs> Bertha. Love is born. it. That's and the cute. other one is called Butterflies Don't Hide. Oh, I love so, that. I yeah. love that. And I'm actually I'm working on another book, too, that's kind of in between all of this, which is um, my husband had a stroke a couple of years ago, and I started posting what I was learning from the experience and why I would have chosen to have this in my life. And I, I just started... <laughs> excuse me, posting it on Facebook and people responded so profoundly to my postings and they were all like, wow, this is amazing stuff. And they said, why don't you make this into a book? So I'm turning it into a book. Yay. So, yeah. Oh, babe, really I'm great. so excited. Thank God, because your realizations and intuitions about life are so astute and people really need to read about them. No, yeah. want, Bertha is born. Butterflies don't hide, and do you know the name of the the post stroke yes. wife of a yeah. post stroke? Yeah, it's husband? called Back. <laughs> love it, love yeah. it. Rebirth Back dot dot rebirth after a stroke. Oh, babe, these are so necessary for humankind. Thank you for being part of the evolution and revolution to evolution. Thank God. Well, actually, I wanted to comment about your children's classes. 
I remember this so clearly and I use this, I, I tutor, I'm a tutor also and I work with kids of all ages and they confide in me because I'm not the parent and you know, they, whatever. I'm the, right. I'm the tutor that they can confide in. So, you know, my kids will come and they'll say, oh, so-and-so made fun of me at school today and told me I was this. And I'm like, okay, well, if, if that kid told you you were a book, would you cry and get upset? No. Okay, if that kid called you an apple, do you, are you an apple? No. You know you're not an apple, right? Right? So, you know, and then I and then I say, well, if they called you stupid, do you think you're stupid? And then the conversation begins. And it's like, if you know you're not an apple and you know you're not a book and you know you're not stupid, you should have the same emotional or lack of emotional charge with all three of those things. But if there is a charge to stupid, then I'm like, well, why? Why do you feel stupid? And then I can really help that my students work That's through great. it. Well, I learned that from you. That's great. I, I love think, it. Yeah. I think. <laughs> I'm yeah. sure I learned that from you. I yeah. absolutely learned that from you. No, but like what... I love the concept of teaching children because I feel like that's the most effective teacher, which you are, is being able to teach a six-year-old. That's like the level everyone needs to learn, especially this profound information at. So like, can yeah. you give an example of something really, really basic, maybe the way you would teach the six-year-old classes about your concepts to get to the best um, life ever? You know, I, it's been so many years since I've, taught the children's class, but there's one example that I just love. She, there was this little girl, she never said a word. It was a, I think it was a 10 week class that I did. We'd meet in the park and I'd get into these really, you know, I, I, like I said, I, I would tell these kids the same thing that I would tell adults, but just a lot shorter. <clears throat> so there we are sitting in the park and I'm talking about fear. And I'm explaining fear and where does fear come from and what does it cause in us? And I'm going on and on and on and everybody in the class is just, you know, adding their input. And this little girl, like I said, she never said a word for weeks. She looks at me and she goes, Royce. And I said, what? She goes, it's just fear. And I went, <laughs> that's it. Right. You totally got it. It's just fear. Wow. And it was so profound and I got goosebumps when she said it. And it was like, yeah, you know, we add all of this these layers onto fear and truly it is just fear false evidence appearing real yeah you know yeah so she got it she was six years old oh man that's so yeah. awesome what a great example well you are a great <laughs> example to me and I wanted to ask you who are your examples or who do you look up to in life who are your inspirations Oh, well, my biggest hero is John Lennon still. Love it. Love him. Love him. He was, you know, he changed the world in his own way. Um, a lot of my heroes, heroes are musicians and artists. You know, Prince, uh, a lot of people that died last year, Robin Williams, um, people that were able to get things across in a way that people could really hear, you know. Um <sighs> Maybe I'm a sound bite kind of girl, but I, I think that if you can't get it across in a sentence, it you know it's just going to go past people. So these people were so succinct and so able to just get their message out there. You know, here we are singing along with John Lennon. He's going give peace a chance, and it's like how profound is that? Yes. You know what a cute, fun, wonderful song, but how really profound? Give peace a chance. We've never given it a chance. Oh. So things, people like that. You know, I just, I really hold in high esteem. Oh my gosh, I love that. I just heard this crazy statistic last night. I think I was reading some book and it was in 3,000 or more actually years, there have only been 200 years of peace or more. I think it was more. It was some crazy number. Like in 3,000 years of humanity, there have only been 200 years of peace. And they weren't all at the same time. <laughs> no, probably like one year here, one year there. I mean, there's been war on some corner of the world, well, some middle section of the world, a.k.a. the Middle East, for eons, forever. Well, since herding cultures came about. Herding cultures, look into it. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah, I mean, crazy, crazy. Well, I can't, even I can't even imagine 200 years. They must have added up every minute because... Right. <laughs> Right, exactly. Wow. I know, I can't even imagine 200 years. I, I hope yeah. to God to experience it. Well, thank the Lord, thank the universe 
for you, teaching your profound insights. And I will say, John Lennon is an absolute mirror because you are the soundbite girl and you do give us in the classes and in your book and in your teachings and just knowing you, talking to you, being your friend, you do give those little morsels of truth and wisdom and profundity that we can actually absorb and understand and assimilate quickly. Easy, assimilatable, and if, if you can't assimilate it yet because of your, bro your blocks, Royce will take you back work you through it, get you unblocked. You get you unblocked, but Royce will, will guide. We all need a guide. You know, yeah. we, no yeah. woman is an island. We can't do this by ourselves. So, yeah. yeah. I, I think that's, that's important to mention, too, that I don't, it's not about me doing the work for you. I don't say much at all, really. But mm. I, I open the space. I allow you to do whatever you need to do and to get it in your own way, in your own time. But um, when I do the deep inner work with people, I'm not telling them what they should do or where they should look or what they should even address, you know, what their issue is. They need to do it themselves. And it's all about empowering people to discover their own truth and their own intuition and their own soul purpose. You know, why are you here? You know, I don't tell people, I don't, I don't give those answers. And it's frustrating sometimes for people because they're like, Oh, well, you're this guru <laughs> or whatever you called me. You know, True. why don't you just tell me? And, you know, I will just go, if I tell you that's disempowering you, and I don't know what your truth is. I really don't. That's not my job. You know, it's like when you go and have a reading, you know, and I'm, I'm sure mediums and psychics and, and people like that are great, and they get information, and it can be really incredibly helpful. But if somebody tells you, what your past life is or tells you what your issues are it's kind of like reading a book about it, it does, it's not real right. you know as opposed to let's do the work let's dig in let's find it you know it's like you're 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 learning how to cook you're learning how to you know hold the the tools and, and the saw and the hammer as opposed to reading about it it's a totally different experience Amen. so yeah i yes. give you tools PLA gives you tools. PLA gives us <laughs> tools. Well, it used to be perfect love awakening, and now uh -huh. it's transformed. Like everything yes. in life, it's shifted to perfect life awakening. Yeah, which was more inclusive. Yeah. You know, people had issues with that word love. You know, it's like, oh, is it about love and relationships? Well, no, it's about loving yourself. But a lot of people couldn't get past that, and so I shifted it, turned That's it right. into life, which is much more inclusive. Yeah. I love it. Well, I used to have a woman's group called the IVs. Give me a shot of my women to the vein, which stood for the iron vaginas. And then I told a rabbi the name of my group, and he said, that's disgusting. I'm like, why? Vaginas aren't disgusting. He's like, it's just so angry. And I'm like, okay. And, and then I meditated on it, and I came to realize, wait, it can still be the IVs, but it could be less offensive or less angry. Why? We're the inspired visionaries. So now we're the inspired visionaries. That's great. We still give us a shot of our women power to I think you led one of those groups once. Did you? I feel no. like I w hope you did. It was so long ago. Gosh. No. Thank God for you transforming my life so that I can have this amazing life. It's still it's still trying. It's still painful sometimes. It's still challenging. But because I have the tools that I learned from Royce Morales, my beautiful sorceress, who doesn't want to be called a guru sorceress, um, my one-liner wise guru. Well, okay, la la this is actually my last question. Um, when you are working with people, because I know you're intuitive, I know that you're psychic, I just know you are from things you said to me. and, and That's because you're intuitive. Well, yes, it's, it's a beautiful mirror. I am intuitive, actually. But... Um, I know you listen to that voice, which is why I listen to what you have to share because I know how authentic you are. But when you do have profound insights about people, do you still have to stop yourself and say, I know which direction this person needs to go, but that person needs to come to it on his own or it won't be as effective? Yeah, absolutely. Jeez. In fact, I <clears throat> years ago I had a student that <clears throat> excuse me, was – she was just this amazing, just powerful, beautiful, amazing person. And we were meditating in class, and I was literally given this word-by-word -word description of what this woman was supposed to be doing. 
you know, because she, she was kind of floundering around. She was teaching and she wasn't really thrilled with it and whatever. And I was told, like I said, word for word, this is what this person is supposed to be doing. And I was ready to open my eyes and just share with her and give her all this great insight. And I heard another voice. And I don't want to call it a voice. It was more like just a knowing, kind of a breeze that went over me that said, no, you now know this, but you're not supposed to tell her because she's not ready. Wow. And so I held on to that. It was hard. I held on to it for probably five years. And she was back in class one night and she said to me, you know, guess what I'm doing? And she told me this whole thing she was doing. And I went, oh my God, five years ago, I was told that's what you need to be doing. But I was told I couldn't tell you. I'm so glad that you got there by yourself. Because if I had told her that, she would have bolted out of the room. She would have never done it. She truly wasn't ready and she would have freaked. So, is, yeah, it's that kind of thing. But I, I know what I should say and what I shouldn't say. And when I cross that line, uh-uh. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow, honey. You are so amazing. Well, I'll take whatever you have to give because I've taken it before <laughs> and it's really worked miracles for my life. I am just so blessed to have encountered you. Thank you, Yvonne, for connecting me. I think her name was Yvonne. Um, Yvette, yeah. Yvonne. You're incredible. I'm so grateful for the lives that you touch, for my own life that you've touched so profoundly. And I'm so happy that you have a book out now about it. No, another incredible book with these teachings, very entertaining and powerful and deep and loving. Want and her other books that are coming out, you've got to read Royce's work. If you can, I just Google you and everything comes up. Royce Morales, R-O-Y-C-E-M-O-R-A-L-E-S. Yes. Royce Morales. You can just Google her and her website will come up. But can you give the website one more time? Contentintentcopy.com. Yes. yes. I, I'm yes. like, can you Content give it? I'll give it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what it is. Contentintentcopy.com. There yes. might be a shift in that name someday. No, okay. <laughs> kidding. <laughs> Yeah. But yes, it is. Con her her content is full of intent, and it is a beautiful intent. And when we all take responsibility for ourselves, our own thoughts, our own feelings, what we've attracted into our lives, the partners, the family members, even from above, which we didn't talk about this show, but maybe another one, past lives, past you know what we agreed to up there, like Caroline Carolyn Miss talks about. Whatever your sacred contracts are that you've come down here to experience, Royce's teachings can help you manage those contracts with more yeah. peace and ease and grace. No and more victim. <laughs> no more victim. Amen. No more victims. Yes, yeah. no more victims. We are All empowered. Chosen. That's right. Being a victim only works for so long, or never ever works. You just, <laughs> or never ever really. Right, it, it never works. It's just our comfort zone, but it's not our empowered zone. Get out of your comfort zone. Get into your empowered zone. Look up Royce Morales. She can help you and give you the tools to get you there. She's not going to tell you any answers that your guides don't want you to know at the time, but she will help you come to them yourself, and, and it'll be a beautiful journey with lots of love and support and a lot of digging with the shovels, with, with love, with shovels. gentleness. With gentleness. A lot of hugs yeah. and love and gentleness. You're so beautiful. I love you. I'm, I'm so I grateful you for you. I love you. You have inspired oh. me. You've inspired me to the depth. <laughs> I'm you, so Debbie. happy to share you with everybody. And I, I just can't wait to hear um, how many more lives you touch by, you know, please respond to this video. Like it if you like it. And tell us what you've uncovered and if you've read Royce's books and what you've experienced with Royce, please write below in the comments. And if you can find her, she's hiding in the woods, but if you can get a hold of her for one of her <laughs> classes, retreats, workshops, please do. It will truly, truly change your life. I am here as an empowered woman who used to be an insecure, self-conscious, self-hating victim of life. And I can Royce. tell you, I used to be. And it is because of Royce and her teachings that I am now doing my purpose, it empowered and met my soulmate. It is because of Royce. So because it, of you, Abby. It's because of me, but you definitely gave me the tools. So thank you, Angel. You thank are such you. an angel. Do you have anything to leave our viewers with before we sign off? Uh I don't know. I think we covered it all. It we was did. awesome. We did. So.
We have a little, yeah, a little you. gentle shovel and covering it all. We're so good <laughs> like my that. Little tiny shovel. Our little shovels of love. Square. Shovels yeah. of love. You're so amazing. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining me today, Royce. I appreciate you so much. I cannot wait to get my hands on all of your books and remember, remember why I'm here through your teachings. Yes. That's the key. So thank you, angels. Get a grip on your life. Get a hold of Royce if you need help doing that. Get empowered. We are not victims. We are empowered. Love you, babe. Talk to you soon. Love you. Okay. Bye.